One of the most asked questions I get is how do I get my iPhone videos to look so smooth? In most cases, it comes down to technique. So if you're unhappy with your iPhone footage, they look too shaky or want to improve your B-roll shots to make them look as if they were floating in the air, then make sure to stick till the end because I will be sharing the six useful tips that will instantly make your iPhone footage look smooth. Now, the first tip is the most obvious one is to have image stabilization enabled in the settings of your iPhone. Now, by default, it should be enabled, but just to be safe, let me show you where you can enable it. So head over to settings, camera, and then on the very top record video. And as you can see, you have enhanced stabilization, which is toggled on. Now keep in mind, it will zoom in slightly in order to stabilize your video. Now I would leave it on if you're shooting handheld. However, if you have it on a tripod, I recommend disabling it. This way you get the full frame. And just by doing this, you're one step closer to getting smooth looking shots. Tip number two is to hold your camera properly. Now what I see a lot of beginners do is holding their phone this way and then stretching out their arms and filming like this. You don't want to do that because first of all, you don't have that three point contact. And secondly, by moving just your arms, you're more likely to introduce shakes into your video. So if you plan to shoot this way, be sure to have the camera close to your body. And then when you create your camera movement, move with your body and not with your arms. But what I find to be more effective is by holding the camera in the middle with my right hand and then using my left hand to support the bottom of the phone. And the reason to hold it this way is to prevent these up and down movements. And just by doing that, it makes a huge difference. I recommend getting to the habit of holding your phone this way whenever you create your camera movement. My third tip, which some of you might be familiar with, is walking heel to toe. Now, when you do that, you also want to be sure to wear good shoes. Otherwise, you're gonna make your life much harder than it already is, right? So what do I mean by walking heel to toe? So first you wanna hold your camera properly. Be sure to have it close to your body. Let's assume we're gonna create a push in shot. And then you wanna bend your knees slightly and then in a smooth, constant speed, walk heel to toe. They also call it the ninja walk. Now, when you do it the first time, there's actually a lot to think about. You need to properly hold your camera. You gotta check the framing and then you gotta bend your knees and then walk heel to toe and then keep that speed constant, right? There is a lot to think about. Now, I don't care if it looks stupid. More importantly is that your shots look smooth. The audience won't feel dizzy and can watch your video till the end. Now, depending on the shot you want to create, it's not always necessary to walk in long distances. Sometimes it's even enough to just move with your body. So important is hold your phone properly and walk heel to toe and start doing that right away so that it becomes a habit. Now you might be thinking, well, great Bennett, but can you show me like a practical example? So here's a little exercise for you so that you can practice these techniques. So I'm gonna do a simple push forward shot and I'm gonna use the sign over there as my focal point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is frame the shot. I want the sign to be in the center as I move forward. And I also wanna be sure to keep the horizon leveled. You don't want to rotate it while you create your push forward shot. So this time I'm not gonna lock the focus and exposure because I want the sign to be in focus once I get closer to it. Once I'm ready, I'm gonna hit the record button. I'm gonna hold the camera just the way we talked about. I'm gonna keep it close to my body and then bend my knees and then slowly walk forward. Just like that. And it's always a good idea to do a second shot just in case. So I'm gonna keep recording and go. That was a nice one. Now be sure to check your shot. If you're unhappy, retake it. So let's look at the final results. Now, depending on the shot you want to create, some camera movements can be hard to achieve. So there's another method that can help smoothen out your shots by shooting in slow motion. So what I want to create is a low shot of this tree where I push forward the camera 
and rotate at the same time. That is quite a difficult move to achieve. Now I could hold it this way and get close to it, but I won't be able to create a lot of movement in my shot. So in this case, I'll be holding it this way pushing upward with my body while still tucking in my elbows. Now, since I want this shot to be longer, I can shoot in slow motion by changing the frame rate to 60 frames per second. This way I can stretch it out in the edit to create a slow motion effect. So once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna start from here and then I'm gonna start recording and go. And again, I'm gonna rotate and slowly push up as much as I can while rotating. So I think that looks good. Let's check out the final results. Now there's actually a mode called slow-mo that allows you to shoot up to 240 frames per second. Now keep in mind that you do need a lot of light and the quality will only be in HD and not 4K. Now I prefer to shoot in 120 frames per second as the quality is a bit better than when shooting in 240 frames per second. And what I'm gonna do is actually create a crane shot revealing the location. So I'm gonna start low and then move the camera up high. That's it. So if you find the camera movement to be very difficult and you're struggling to get smooth shots, you can use the slow-mo mode to make the shakes less apparent. My next tip, if you have the iPhone 14 Pro Max or 15 Pro Max, you can take advantage of the action mode. That is basically the enhanced version of the stabilization you already have. Now the downside to it is that you need enough light and the resolution will be in 2.8K instead of 4K. So in order to activate action mode, I'm gonna select this running guy icon over here and we're now in action mode and it's switched over to the ultra wide angle lens, which is good since I want to have more in the frame. I'm gonna actually increase the frame rate to 60. This way I can slow it down and action. My last tip for today is to add post stabilization. Almost every editing software offers a way to stabilize your footage in the edit. In Final Cut Pro, I can simply select my clip and then select stabilization. It will then analyze the image and then stabilize the shot even further. Now it doesn't always work. Sometimes the shot can look wobbly after applying the stabilization, but in most cases it actually does a really good job. But there are also editing apps out there like LumaFusion that allow you to apply stabilization within the editing app. I just lost my voice. Now there's also a video stabilization app called Emulsio 4 where you can import your video you've shot and let the app stabilize the footage. Now you can try it out for free, but if you want to remove the watermark, you will have to do an in-app purchase. So I hope this video was helpful and you found some useful techniques on how to achieve smoother results with your iPhone. Now, if you do want to learn more, check out my mini course, iPhone Camera 101, where you can learn more about the default camera app and some other filmmaking techniques to achieve cinematic results. Now, if you have any questions, as always, be sure to leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Take care and see you in the next one.